On 29 July 1987, India and Sri Lanka signed the Indo-Sri Lankan Peace Accord. According to this agreement, the Sri Lankan army would completely withdraw from the north and an Indian peacekeeping force would enter. All Tamil insurgent groups were to surrender their arms. After this, an autonomous elected Tamil government would be set up and all the rights of the Tamils would be restored. India assumed their mission would be easily accomplished as Sri Lanka had agreed to all the terms of the agreement and the LTT was a force that India had trained and nurtured. So within days of signing the treaty, the Indian army started to airlift soldiers and equipment to Sri Lanka. Within a month, an entire division of the Indian army arrived in Sri Lanka. It was only after its arrival in Sri Lanka did India find out that LTT was not willing to surrender arms. LTT leader Prabhagaran was determined to fight for a separate Tamil nation called Tamil Elam with or without India's help. This shocked India. At this point, the IPKF was ordered to forcefully disarm the LTT and capture Jaffna. With friends becoming foes, the Indian army launched Operation Pawan. The first operation in this mission was a Jaffna University helidrop. The aim of this operation was to capture the LTT leadership hiding inside Jaffna University building which served as a tactical headquarters of the LTT. Capturing the LTT leadership would make the LTT directionless and the rebels would quickly surrender. So on 12th October 1987, 120 commanders of the 10th Para and 360 soldiers of the 13th Sikh Light Infantry, that is a total of 418 soldiers, were to be airdropped into Jaffna University football ground using four MI-8 helicopters. Each MI-8 helicopter can carry 20 soldiers. Since the university football ground could accommodate only two MI-8s at a time, a total of 12 shuttles would be required to insert all soldiers needed for the operation. The paracommandos were headed by Major Shannon Singh. The Sikh ally was headed by Major Birender Singh. The commander of the whole operation was Major General Harkirat Singh. The whole operation was estimated to last just 90 minutes. As per the plan, the first group of paracommandos dropped would secure the location and mark the area for further insertion. But unknown to the Indian military, the LTD had broken into their communications and were fully ready for the assault. The Jaffna University campus was turned into a fortress. On the night of 11th October 1987, the first wave of two MI-8 helicopters took off from the Palali Air Base to Jaffna. Both helicopters switched off all their lights and hence the LTD did not spot them. At midnight, the two MI-8 helicopters landed in the Jaffna University football ground and all the 40 commandos landed unopposed. But before they could take defensive positions, they came under heavy fire from the Tamil Tigers, who by now encircled them. Due to this, the commandos were not able to mark the location for further landing of the MI-8 helicopters. During the ensuing battle, the second wave of two MI-8 helicopters arrived, but could not locate the drop zone as the commandos on the ground were busy fighting the rebels. Because of this and the total darkness, the second wave helicopters abandoned their mission and returned to base. Meanwhile, the third shuttle of two MI-8 helicopters headed to the university. But now, the LTD had tracked the route of the helicopter and directed heavy mission gun fire towards the incoming choppers. One para-commando took a bullet shot and was wounded. The helicopters landed and all 40 commandos were offloaded, including the injured commando, who insisted on fighting with his fellow comrades. After a few more successful shuttles, the final tally of inserted soldiers were 120 para-commandos and 30 Sikh ally against the intended 480 soldiers. No more insertion could be done as the LTT were beginning to use RPG rockets on the MI-8 helicopters. As per the plan, the Sikh ally was to hold the landing ground and the para-commandos will go after the LTT leadership. Since the airdrop was not completed, the fate of the mission became unclear. Now the GOC 54 Division Commander, Major General Harikirat Singh, contacted Major Shannon and informed him about the situation and also instructed him to proceed with the mission. Major Shannon informed this to Major Birender Singh. He also advised him to dig in and hold on. The commandos then proceeded to locate the LTT leadership. They took the help of a local Tamil person, but in pitch darkness, they lost their way and got holed up in a nearby house. The paracommandos lost all communication with the Sikh ally as a radio man was shot dead soon after landing. All throughout the night, the soldiers of the Sikh ally 
bravely fought the LTT attack, which was coming from all directions. They soon ran out of ammo and was getting killed one by one. By daybreak, the dark reality unfolded as almost all the 30 soldiers of the Sikh ally were killed. They ran out of ammunition and only one soldier named Sipoy Gora Singh was alive and was taken prisoner of war by the LTT. The next morning, with the paracommandos still holding out, a rescue force under Lieutenant Colonel Dalbir Singh was gathered and sent to rescue the trapped paracommandos. With three T-72 tanks and a small group of SF commandos, Dalbir Singh bravely headed to the battlefield. The LTT laid a minefield and a unit had to come up with an ingenious method to resume the mission. Lieutenant Colonel Dalbir Singh located and extricated the paracommandos, but the Sikh light infantry was completely eliminated. The Indian Army lost 30 infantry men and 6 para commandos in the assault, and the whole operation lasted 18 hours. If you are interested in watching the full video on the Indian military mission in Sri Lanka, click this video or the link in the description. If you like this video, please subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.